Okay, so today I'm gonna talk about the band theory, but uh, don't worry about it. it's not too difficult. I wanna just uh, say uh, very, very uh, essential part of the band theory, not uh, too much detail. So if you understand the quantum mechanics, uh, which one I gave in the last class, uh, it's not so difficult uh, to understand this band uh, theory because. This uh, simple band theory is uh, for the experimentalist, not the uh, theorist. So I'm going to touch just a, a very essential part and uh, an easy example. OK, so the content line of the, this session is something like this. Uh, I'm going to start about the uh, hydrogen atoms and uh, simple 1D chain molecules. And uh, I want to explain what's the meaning of the band energy. And I'm going to extend the two and three dimensional case and uh, explain about the brilliant Jones. And also, uh, those, the density state, that's the very important concept in a uh, solid state physics. So I'm going to explain about the density of state in a two and three dimension. And also, many uh, physical property is determined by the Fermi surface because the Electron at the Fermi surface is interacting, interact with the uh, external field and the magnetic field. So the property of the Fermi surface is very, very important. Okay. So um, in a biology, uh, most uh, important finding in a biology is related to the genome. Or uh, in order to understand the the inside of the human body or animals, we need anatomy. Anatomy. So band structure is a kind of uh, anatomy or genome of the electronic structure of the materials. Yeah, I explained that uh, in, in, if you have some materials, when you apply the electric field or magnetic field or electromagnetic wave, there is some response. And most of that response came from the electronic electrons inside of the materials. So in order to understand the behavior of the electron, we need uh, to understand the band structure. The motion of electron or the response of the electron in a solid state is determined by the band structure. So if we uh, know about the band structure of the material, uh, we can calculate the electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity and heat capacity, and also optical properties like uh, reflective index, or color of the materials, or bonding energies. Uh, also, we can calculate the elastic and uh, bondings, and also magnetic properties and, and more and more. And here is the typical example of the band structure. Many students feel uh, difficulties to understand what's the meaning of these lines. And there are some many Greek capitals, so it's not easy to understand the meaning. So uh, after finish our class, our lecture about the band theory. I hope many students get some idea about this band structure. Okay, so let's start about the hydrogen atom. Okay, so we already learned about the hydrogen atoms. If we have a, a nucleus and there are some electrons, we simply describe by this simple motion. And the Hamiltonian for this simple atom, let's say H1. And also the state of the, the number one uh, hydrogen atom, we uh, write the, uh, by the bracket notation, the wave function is one. And if the electron is belong to the S1S state, the energy is ES, and we have a, uh, the state one is the eigenstate, so we can write this. And let's think about another atom, another hydrogen atoms, let's say uh, H2. The Hamiltonian for the at second atom is H2. And the wave function for this uh, second hydrogen atom, let's say uh, state 2, oh, we got uh, such relations. And now um, those two hydrogen atoms are separate infinitely, so they are not incorrect. But now let's uh, 
uh, bring them together and they are getting close. And finally, they are uh, share the electrons. So, this state, let's say the new Hamiltonian H and the new wave function of psi. And we already learned the wave function of the hydrogen atom forms the good set. So that means this new wave function can be described by the linear combination of those two original wave functions. Okay. So the remaining problem is, problem is finding this coefficient. That means if C1 is 1 and C2 is 0 means this new wave function is uh, mainly the wave function 1. In other case, if C1 is, uh, let's say, uh, 0 0.9 and C2, C2 is uh, 0 0.1, then the, the wave function has a mainly similar to the wave function 1, but they including some characteristic of the second wave function also. Okay. Then um, let's solve, try to solve the H2 uh, multiple case. Uh, we, as we already defined the new Hamiltonian H, uh, and if we have a new wave function psi, we obtain the new energy E. And uh, we uh, assume those uh, the linear combination of wave function one and two to describe the new wave function psi. Okay, and let's take the uh, bra operator uh, in our left hand side. The for the wave function one, okay, and we have a uh, bra uh, wave function one and h h Hamiltonian and psi in the right hand side, and also we can apply the uh, second wave function two in the left hand side same form, and we already know the h one uh, has uh, those eigenvalues. With this relation, if we take the uh, one to here, we got the uh, we we already assume this wave function are also normal. So those operation generate oops, generate uh, just the scalar number one, while those operation generate zero because we already assume the orthogonal, orthogonal relations. So, in this case, we got a C1 H hat. I'm sorry. Uh, in this operation, Yeah, these are, uh, yeah, we, uh, first we assume those relation. The inner, uh, it will generate E0, which one is, we don't know yet. And, Those are better. That's the definition of the new uh, energy terms, and they are not the same to the E0. So with this relation, yeah, for this term, we generate E0, 1, 1. Plus C2, beta, Yeah, we obtained uh, those terms to here, and the second operation give C to beta, right? And this one is uh, the left hand side is one 
this form, right? So these are this operation and we open the C1 E. Right? The second equation we generate left hand side E C2 and those results are here. Okay. So uh, it seems like a little bit complicated but uh, it's a very simple uh, mathematics. If you take the time you can do it. So these two equation and we want uh, found the energy E, E0 and beta. That's what we want to know. And we assume that we already know E0 sorry. And also we want to find the C1 and C2. Okay. And we can write down or uh, do you wanna do this one? Okay. Oh uh, actually in when I describe this cat state, this is the atomic number. And actually, we assume they are belong to the 1s electrons. So there is some more details. I mean, we can, we may have all those state. Any state can be here. Okay, so in this equation, we can write down and these are uh, very well known eigenvalue problems. So we can write down again. So, you have obtained the non trivial solution of the C1 and C2. Those matrices, determinant of those matrices, should be zero. Otherwise, they have an inverse matrix. We got the only C1, C2 is zero. So, that's not a physical meaning. So, they should satisfy this solution, the determinant for zero. Okay. So, by the, the those conditions, we can easily obtain the energy state, the energy state E, which one we want to know, can be described by the E0 plus minus beta. Okay. So, uh, in our definition, beta is uh, always negative value. So, those energy are higher. I'm sorry, uh, those energy are lower, those energy are higher. This relation. And also, we have to obtain this eigen energy. We can obtain the C1 and C2, uh, 1 over root 2, or in this relation, we can do it uh, in a metric equation. So that means we have a two-way function of the linear combination of state one and uh, atom one and two, 
with the uh, subsection or the uh, sum of them. So, if you write down the first uh, 1s uh, atom orbital here, and this is the E0, 0, sorry. Sorry, the H to be ES, not the E0. Sorry, And for this uh, value function means they are in phase, so they are they had a adder. So they form such kind of orbital motions by the Huns rule. The spin of the electron must be antiparallel. And the energy of this one is lower. So that means they are bonding. In other case, they are out of phase. Two orbitals are out of phase. So there is some node in the middle of the uh, two atoms. So they, they call anti-bonding. And they have a higher energy. So those bonding states are uh, uh, stable, and those anti-bonding states have a higher energy and unstable. So when we have two hydrogen atoms, when they get in together, they form such molecular orbits, and the total energy of the system is getting lower. That's the meaning of the bonding, molecular bonding. Okay. So let's take a look more carefully about the, this bonding state. We have uh, two atoms, the nucleus of the hydrogen atoms, and each wave function is something like this. And if they are additive, they form such total molecular field, molecular wave functions, and they form the uh, bondings for the constructive combination, means the class. And also, in this case, if two at atoms are here, but they have a uh, uh, different phase of the wave function, they form uh, anti-bonding by the destructive combination of the wave function, and they have a minus sign here. That's the meaning of the minus sign. So they are anti-bonding state. Okay. okay, now uh, let's move on to the uh, more com complicated uh, case. Let's think about the uh, one-dimensional chain. We have uh, molecules from 1 to n. Here, n is going to infinite, uh, finally. But now we are think about that just to find at n. Let's assume if we have a uh, think about j's atoms, the orbital wave function is the uh, j here. And the Hamiltonian of the, the system is sum of each Hamiltonian. And each state are uh, also normal. That means the function here, the J, and let's say I is here. Those two wave functions are independent, so they should be also normal. And we want to solve the total Hamiltonian for the, the total wave function psi and those energy, let's say energy E. And we assume the total wave function is a linear combination of all sum of all state. It's uh, similar to the previous case. We just extend the two atomic case to a molecular chain. 
So we can repeat same things, but uh, we assume uh, with the Hamiltonian, we have a two, we define two energy state. Uh, for the uh, I and J are same case, they call the on-site energy, we have a alpha. And if we have a relation I and J are just a uh, nearest neighbor, that means I is J plus minus one. In that case, we have a, a certain value called beta, certain energy. And otherwise, all the work gave zero. That's the kind of simple assumption. That means this beta implies if we have a, a, a one atom here, here, there is a certain probability they are interact with each other. That's what you call hoping energy. So the, there is a finite uh, probability one electron belongs to here can jump to next one. So this hoping means kind of interaction between two energies. So let's repeat the same thing. If we take the I wave function in our left hand side, we can do this one. And uh, because the C is the just number, we can rewrite this form. And we uh, already know those are scalar product. The energy is uh, just a scalar product. So we have uh, those forms and we got a C1 because of the also normality. Yes, uh, actually, both uh, precise say is uh, linearly independent. In order from the from the also normal uh, basis vector, they should be uh, linearly independent. You should remember that you learn about that in uh, linear algebra. Oh, actually. Uh, the truth is, you can form the uh, uh, some kind of basis vector not uh, also normal. They are not. Uh, they are not uh, independent. But uh, if you form the uh, linear independent also normal basis vector, it's much easier. And those wave function uh, usually satisfy such relations. So we can use that. Okay. So, if you repeat those operations for the n numbers, we can form such kind of n by n matrix relation. And uh, actually, those relation before we obtain those one, we have a These relations and in the same logic, you know, before we can move on, move on to the this right hand side to the left hand side, we have alpha minus e in a diagonal element, and then uh, in order to find found the uh, the uh, non-zero c values c1 to cn, they should have uh, the diagonal the, the determinant must be zero. So, the remaining problem is finding those uh, matrices. Uh, you have to solve those matrices. Okay. And okay, something wrong. Okay, so let's assume the one dimensional chain from the ring 
or we can send n to the infinite, or we can a periodic boundary condition. So that means after the n atom, the next one is uh, again one and n again, or you can form such links. So that means we can define C0 to the Cn, or we have a relation Cj is Cn plus J. That's the meaning of the periodicity. And also in a real term, the number of atom is order of Avogadro number. So 10 to 23 is a really, really huge number. So we can ignore the uh, surface effect. So one and n, they are surface of the solid. And now we are talking about uh, some bulk uh, state. So we can ignore the one and n. But in many physics, uh, surface is also very important, if, especially when you are uh, uh, study the nanostructures. But uh, if, uh, when we are talking about the bulk state, the surface uh, are usually negligible. So we can ignore the surface effect. OK, so. Um, So in this equation, in this equation, we can write down this relation. Okay. So we have a, uh, those uh, coefficient and alpha and beta and system energy E. So let's uh, think about that uh, some trial solution. Actually, those uh, relations is came to block theorem in a uh, solid state physics. But now let's assume those terms. Okay, and in this relation. Uh, If we uh, assume the, this theta, theta is uh, integer number multiplication over 2 pi over n. That is here. Then J's coefficient Cj is from this relation. And this one over root n is came from the normalization conditions. So if you insert this relation to here, and here, and here, then you can solve it. And finally, what you can get is the energy state is alpha plus 2 beta cosine 2 pi m over n. Is okay. I'm gonna check you. Are, you guys are following me. Please, uh, if you if you are okay, then yeah, yeah, type okay. Good. Cool. Let's keep going. The energy state of those one dimensional chain is now we have all those four. The theta is 2 pi m over n here. And let's back to the uh, uh, single atom. If we have uh, one atom, we have uh, one state, only one energy state. In you know, a two atoms, <clears throat> we already learned the bonding and anti-bonding state. They are plus, they are minus. Okay. 
It's like this. Yeah, we have uh, some normalized vector here. And let's think about that. What happens if we have uh, three atoms? The number of energy state must be three. And four, five, we have a uh, number of state to the same to the atomic number. And if we think about the, uh, and it's infinite case, we have a continuous energy state, right? So that's the meaning of this result. And if we write the energy as a function of the theta, it should be cosine theta. At the, at the center, of, center value is alpha. And now we have a negative beta here. So alpha plus two beta is lowest value, and alpha minus two beta is highest value, and those highest is four beta. So we have a four beta here. You got the value of beta. Okay. Yeah. And actually, this theta value is, uh, we, we will change it to this variable to the k, which one is momentum of the electron. Okay, so uh, let's think about that, uh, some simple example of the n is five cases. If we have five electrons, then if you have all energy uh, additive, all day from the constructive wave function, then uh, we have a sorry. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, those energies, and they are the, the lowest energy. And if we have, so the total wave function envelope is something like this. And if we have a uh, one node at the center, means those two are bonding, those are bonding, but there is no uh, kind of anti-bonding. So in this case, the wave function is forming something like this. And we have uh, those energy. And in this case, we have a uh, chamber function. And also, we have uh, a chamber function. Again, again, again. So those states are highest energy. And just to think about that, forget about this atomic state, but let's think about the, some string in a combined geometry. If we have a such string, such mode, yeah, this is kind of standing wave, right? So we already know those standing wave can be described by the sine k something here k is 2L, I'm sorry to be 2 pi over 2L something, right? So it's quite a similar physics. You can remember that uh, such kind of standing wave description. Okay. And also, you have uh, some uh, relation. If you have more node, more node, here the number of node, then means it's less stable. So that means the electron prefer those kind of wave function means the electron can be anywhere. But in this case, electron can be here and here, but not here. And in this case, electron is very localized. They are belong to their own atom only. There's no uh, possibility between those atoms, those the, between the atoms. 
Okay. So that means uh, that the, uh, what I'm meaning is that there's more node than energetically unstable. So that means if you have a uh, single atoms, we have a uh, those energy state for 2s, 3s, or 4s, even to 5s. And in a higher state, we have a 2p, 3p, 4p, or 5p energy state. Now we are uh, almost separate atoms here. But if we uh, make a small distance between each atoms here, this is a distance with atoms, those two energy state are start to interact with each other. So when they are cl getting close, for this uh, one S, I'm sorry, this one S, S state is separate to the <coughs> two state. Actually, they are forming uh, many state so in our atomic distance here or here, those state are fielded state and this uh, upper energy upper form of this one and they energy, those energy are uh, electron are fielded. But this high energy, this is kind of antibonding state, there is no electrons. So, you know, when they are formed the real solid state, let's say here, we have a very small energy band gap. But if you are reduce the, the radius between them, we have an even larger band gap. So, in this case, uh, we, put, we call this is the insulator. In this, ca this case, we call it semiconductor. And if we are here, it's kind of vacuum. I don't know. It's kind of uh, the, the conductor. So, depends on this band gap. Band gap means uh, we have a, a fielded energy state and we have an empty state and the gap is large. Then there is no conduction electrons. And if the band gap is very small, then some electron in a balanced band can go with a conduction band, what we call semiconductor. And if there is no band gap, means the conduction band is filled with some electrons and they are moving freely. So that's what we call conductor. Okay. So let's think about that. We assume, we assume only hopping between nearest neighbors. And if we have a more hoppings in next nearest or even higher hopping terms, that means we have a, uh, for the single hopping, we have a, those, those energy terms. But if we have a second and third hoppings, we have a more terms here. Uh, you can uh, check it by yourself, but uh, it's not so difficult. Anyway, so the difference is two seta and three seta here. So that means instead of the simple cosine one here, this is the uh, previous result with the only beta one term. If we have a second beta and third beta term, we have a more structure. So we have a such kind of more wavy shape in a band. But physically, that's the general. That means the electron in one side can hop into the nearest neighbor. The probability is more, even uh, more higher than the second and third one. That's physically. Uh, makes sense. So those wavy amplitude of such kind of a behavior came from the cosine two theta or cosine three theta is usually small. 
the overall behavior is still such kind of cosine terms came from the first uh, first uh, hopping terms. So if we have a, a second and third neighbor interaction or hoppings, then the structure is more complicated, something like this. Okay. So Let's extend this uh, one-dimensional case to the sec uh, two or three-dimensional cases. This should be the same, one-dimensional case. And if we think about some uh, periodic systems, usually that happens in a, a crystal structure, and we can use the Bloch theorem, then uh, that means if we have a translation and symmetry, we can take out those uh, planar terms, and this uh, quotient we can change it to the dependent on the position terms, and the wave function of the solid state also can be described by those relation. Here, the R vector means uh, the wave function of the single atoms. And now we can easily check out this C coefficient is changing to those plane wave functions. And uh, the total wave function is uh, those forms. So, in a simple cubic case, in a simple cubic case, we can rewrite down. The total energy must be alpha plus 2 beta cosine, cosine, cosine again, but they are cosine kxa, K, ky, kg. Okay, here a is the lattice constant. So we can define kx, ky, kg with. With some integer number m and l. So that means if the m is going to n, we have a 2 pi a. That's the largest k number. And if M is 1, we have a those value. They are smallest k value. Oh, so I'm sorry, they can be 0 also. So k vector can be 0. Anyway, so let's think about this term and this term. The smallest uh, non zero k value is inverse over Na. A is the now the lattice constant, so order of angstrom. And N is the Avogadro number. So they should be very, very small value. While those values are 2 pi over one ang order of one angstrom. So that's the largest k value here. It's the same for the x, y, and g. So this energy expression is energy state in a k momentum space or k space. And the meaning is they are a field transform of the real space. And here, in a cubic state, this is actually a k space, sorry, k. And those points we call the gamma point the most uh, symmetric point. And those lines, there is there are some names. Yeah, I don't know why they uh, take this name. Actually, there is some reason, but I don't know. 
So it's uh, one of the difficult part to understand the band structure. When people write uh, drawing the band flowers, they are using this relation. So if you are not expert in a band theory, it's not easy. But most band calculation following from start to gamma point to M point or R point or X point. Yeah, and, and sometimes people gave a result, those symmetric lines. Okay. So let's keep in mind that part. And let's think about that uh, simple case for the 2D case. So we can ignore the G part. And we assume the the uh, k value um, to uh, actually it should be right. the lattice constant a. Okay, and that's what we call the brilliant zone. And as you see here, they are periodic functions. So if we know the behavior of the energy in this range, if we go to higher value, they should repeat of this wave. So this uh, CD plot, actually this the uh, energy plot, sorry. This plot is uh, as in yes, but this equations. So let's think about this uh, two-dimensional case, Kx, Ky, and there is some certain range. That's what you call the Boolean Boolean zone. If you understand the behavior of electron in this range, that's enough to understand all behavior of the uh, electron. So, um, so far we are talking about the, uh, the simple cubic case, and if we uh, think about that uh, such a free electron model in a two-dimensional case, then the energy state is like this, from minus pi, minus pi over a to the pi over a. And then, actually, the energy should be something like this. But if we take the brilliant zone by the symmetry, they are holding this, then they is holding to here. So we can write down something like this. So that is the very simple uh, result. But surprisingly, those uh, simple pre model is quite similar to the real band structure. Let's see here. This is the uh, very simple uh, calculation of the uh, free electron model. This is the free electron model. And this left hand side, they are real band structure calculation. As you see here, even though this simple model, many features are same, very similar. Okay. And let's back to the uh, several cases of the brilliant job. I already explained about the simple cubic case, but in a face center and hexagonal state and body center cubic case, they have all names, different names. So if you take a look at the band structure, you should think about those names. Okay. So here, uh, they are starting from gamma to x, and L, so that means yeah. in a face center of the cubic case, gamma point here, x point is here, and L point is here. So those band structure means if we increase k value from the gamma to the x, gamma to the x means kx. Then the energy is something like this. 
ein Produkt Gamma L, Gamma L hier, der uh, like a KX plus KY plus KG all together. So along to that line, we have uh, those energy spectrums. Just like this. So uh, let's try to draw some previous example. Those are gamma to x along to the delta line, the gamma to the l along to the lambda line, and also from x point to k point and gamma point again. Okay, so uh, match it with uh, those symmetry lines. We can match up those vendor structure with this uh, convention of those, those names. Okay. So far, I'm talking about the vendor structure of the solid state. And I will now recall the Seattle seat uh, model again. Okay. When we are talking about the uh, uh, property of the sol uh, solid, we many times we are talking about the density of state in short dose. The definition of the dose means the number of state per unit energy at given at given energy. E. So that means uh, if you taking those segment. We can obtain the number of uh, total number, number of state uh, up to energy E. So if you take integral, obtain this from minus infinite to energy E. So in other words, if you're taking this uh, theater seat model, density of state means number of seat at given energy E. So if we think about energy E here, how many seat we have, we can count it. That's the meaning of the density of state. And if we add up all those numbers, we can obtain the total number of state up to those energy. That's the meaning of density of state. So those density of state is uh, by the definition, this form, or to rewrite this form. And in a brilliant zone, the energy, uh, let's think about kx and ky, and uh, by the definition of uh, s, that's the, uh, the total number of state up to this energy, means the ds, ds is the number of energy, so it should be uh, multiplication of those blue ring with the density of state. And this blue ring area is nothing else but d k perpendicular and Actually, we have a uh, 2 pi k here. Yeah. And if you're taking the integral from E0 to E0 plus D, and the DE, the delta E is nothing else but uh, gradient of the energy multiplied by dk perpendicular. So, in this sense, 
we can calculate ds with those relations. Sorry, this should be this should be d. Sorry about this. And we can write down density of state in this form. Okay, and yeah, in real uh, band structure, this is the uh, band structure of ion, and we have a gamma point here, H point, and gamma again, and something like this. And now you can understand, for example, this band is Square to the cosine theta something. Oops. Yeah, this is the quite similar that of them. And in this band, it's also very this. And also this one and this one can be approximately those behavior. And how about this? We have a more structure means we have a second or hoping like this. So now you can understand what's going on here, here, here. They are all they can be described by this simple model with a different beta, means different hoping energy for each band. And the center of band is came from this alpha value. And please keep in mind, alpha is came those value, and beta is came from this hoping integral. And this is the uh, on-site energy, called the on-site energy. Okay, so those values are determined by on-site energy. The, the portion is determined by this on-site energy. And such k-dependence energies came from the hoping, hoping points. And the, if from this band structure, if you're taking the, the integral from here, as you see here, you can obtain the density of state of the uh, electrons. Here, the x-axis is the energy, and y-axis is the, uh, the density of state. So, for the S electron, we have a such a parabolic behavior at the, from the bottom of the band. But in a, those two are actually D band. D band have a very sharp peak just below the Fermi level in a ion case. And also they have a broad peak here. So uh, the S and D band are quite different. So from now on, when we are talking about the density of state, we can use a very simple model. For the S band, if you uh, write you know, different model, different axis, the S band usually we say uh, some probably behavior here, but the D band is more localized one. So D band is something like this. And those are S band. Okay. So please keep in mind this simple model. Are we gonna uh, using this simple model many, many times in a later case? Okay. So uh, you know S P band. S band and P band are very similar. They are pretty electron like. They are moving freely. And they have a parabolic band structure. And also, the beta band means the whole thing 
and the beta value is usually large. That means they are easily hoping they are moving around the atomic state. So large beta means uh, large bandwidth because the bandwidth is uh, uh, one dimensional case. It's uh, four times larger than uh, four times over the absolute value of beta. And also density of state has a small value. Okay, so this is the typical characteristic of the SP band. And those are also SP band. But for the D band, D band, they have a, a localized crater, as you already learned. Means the hopping is small. And bandwidth is also small. That means we have a large density of state. <clears throat> yeah, the large bandwidth means uh, if we have a let's call this one. All bands are simply described by this form. And density of state means uh, how many state for each energy, right? So the density of state is inversely proportional to the beta. If beta is small, we have a small, small narrow band, band narrow bandwidth. So there is more state should be uh, in a given energy. So we have a very simple relation for the density of state is inversely proportional to the beta. Yeah, that's the very rough estimation, but uh, it is not uh, uh, it's not uh, quite incorrect. I mean, uh, it's useful uh, speculation. Okay. So this is the simple density of state of the D band here and S band here. Okay. I think it's almost uh, ending time. So just a moment. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, finish this lecture here, and it's time for the questions. Please ask me uh, questions related to this band theory. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, your question is not quite clear. Can you use the microphone? Gina, can you use the microphone? <laughs> okay, then uh, you may uh, ask the question again. Uh, after the class, uh, please uh, come to my office after the class. Actually, those uh, band theory, if you take uh, the solid state physics, it should be take a couple of uh, lectures, but I just uh, summarized very shortly. So it's not quite easy to understand, but what I want to say is uh, you have a, uh, on, you have to understand the relation between the Hopi integral and the uh, bandwidth and the density of state and the overall uh, shape of the band. That's enough.
Yeah, please, other questions? Uh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake when I explained this part. Uh, those mm. uh, here, um, if you take, uh, sorry. That's the meaning of the also normal. And they should be like this. But if you have a Hamiltonian between the those states, or those one, they are not uh, zero, and they are not uh, just uh, the yes. Because, as you see here, if you, uh, if you take the bracket in, in both sides of the Hamiltonian, they uh, generate some scalar number and we define that's the E0. And for this case, we define the number uh, beta. So that means, yeah. So don't confuse this also normal relation and this relation. So when I explain at the first time, I need to be confused. I'm sorry about that. Please uh, ask me some questions.
공유율 Can you hear me? 어, your question is uh, why they have a negative or why they have a zero? Okay. Um, okay, so just a very good question. Actually, if we uh, define the the Stay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If we have a, a positive beta value. Then they are uh, they have a lower energy and they have a higher energy, so it doesn't make sense. And then uh, why do beta must be negative? Uh, that's good question. Yeah, actually, if you take a look at this result, beta should be negative. But um, by the definition. Yeah. I'm sorry, now I cannot answer it. Uh, I'm gonna explain it in next class. Sorry about that. It's a good question. I'm sorry, uh, I, I cannot remember why the beta must be negative. I will take a look and then uh, uh, I'm going to explain in the next class. Okay, so if there's no more questions, then uh, I'm going to close this lecture. And, oh, okay. Oh, a bit of time. Okay, so let me let me uh, uh, frankly speaking, yeah, I don't I don't have any idea about the midterm exam because uh, because this is an online uh, course now. So if uh, I want to take an exam, it should be offline. But uh, if I want to take the online exam, it should be take home exam. So. Uh, yeah, it's not good for this class. Anyway, uh, are, are you going to notice about the midterm exam within this week, okay? Yeah, I, I'll uh, make the schedule and the way to take the exam, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I'll notice it. Okay, then uh, see you Wednesday. Bye.